What's up everyone, today I'm gonna show you how to implement a bubble sort algorithm in assembly language. Bubble sort is a very easy algorithm with a time complexity of n squared, I'm gonna tell you why in a second, but first let me tell you about the algorithm itself. So we have these digits, 5, 3, 4, 2, 6, 1, and we want them sorted using uh, bubble sort. So what we do first is we look at the uh, first two digits, so 5 and 3. We compare them to each other, and if the digit on the left is greater than the digit on the right, we swap. In our case it is, because 5 is greater than 3, so we swap them. Now we have 3, 5, 4, 2, 6, 1. And we basically repeat this operation, so we move our pair. So we, we look at this pair, right? So we move it by 1, and now we are interested in 5 and 4. 5 is greater than 4, so we swap them. We have 3, 4, 5, 2, 6, 1. And now we are looking at 5 and 2. Again, 5 is greater than 2, so we swap. And now, uh, once we swap, we look at 5 and 6, so like the next pair. And here, 5 is less than 6, so we don't swap, but still move one, uh, 1 to the right. We have 6 and 1, so we swap, and we have 6 at the end. As you can see, the largest digit is at the end, so it is sorted. And uh, the rest of the algorithm will basically do the same, but exclude this uh, last digit, right? Because we don't need to worry about it anymore, it is uh, in its place. Uh, so uh, let's look at this animation. Okay, so let's implement it now. Uh, we start with global main, global main uh, section dot text section dot data, and in dot data section we're gonna have our array like that. DB. Actually, it should be DD, not DB. So make sure to change that. And it's gonna be five, three, four, uh, six. No, two, six, one. I think it was like that. And length equals to uh, equals to six. Length is six. Great. So in the dot text section we have our main procedure of course. Uh, we're gonna have an outer loop. We're gonna have an inner loop. Like that. We we're gonna have a swap. No, actually we're gonna have a no swap like this, no swap, and I'm gonna show you why like this in a second, but uh, yeah, that should be it. Alright, so, in our main section, we wanna loop through length, uh, length minus one times, basically, the outer loop. So, uh, we do it like this, like this, move uh, ECX len, and we decrement ECX, and now we get the uh, len minus one like this. And now let's implement the outer loop. We have uh, to move to ESI 0, not 9, 0, and move EDX ECX, uh, like this. So basically, what we have now, ESI will be our pointer, so array pointer, and whenever we're gonna call ECI, we'll be referring to uh, send a certain uh, a certain value in this array. So ESI, uh, e ESI, not ECI. ESI, uh, when zero, it's gonna be pointing to the first element, plus four. Second element, again, plus four. Uh, third element, and uh, it's gonna be like this, because uh, we have an integer array of integers, basically, so each integer is four bytes long, and uh, that's what we're gonna use uh, ESI for, to point to the integer we want. And EDX, uh, EDX is gonna be uh, this register that will help us determine uh, where to stop, uh, stop the loop. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the beginning of our outer loop. Now we move to the inner loop, and in inner loop we move our values to EAX and EBX. And what they're gonna be? They're gonna be this pair that we are comparing. So array plus 
ESI times 4, like this. And to EBX, we're going to move array plus, let me do a space here, plus ESI times 4, sure, and plus 4. Why? Because the next element, next element to this, next element after this, is plus 4, right? So, for example, this plus 4 is this, and we have this pair. This plus 4 is, uh, is this. I hope you understand. Now we compare EAX and TBX and jump uh, less than equal to, uh, to no swap. To no swap. So, if EAX is less than EBX, jump to no swap. That's what it means. Let me next let me make a comment here. First digit of a pair, and this is gonna be the second digit of a pair. Great, that's how it looks. And here we're gonna implement the swap, and uh, we basically gonna move. Uh, we basically gonna move array plus ESI times four, and we're gonna move here. Uh, bx and to this location we're gonna move to this location we're gonna move eax so ebx uh, to ebx we moved this right so now we move ebx to this previous uh, to the uh, to the first digit of a pair and uh, eax goes to the second digit of a pair so this is basically uh, we are swapping these variables, right? Now to this no swap label, it's gonna uh, come either uh, either if we don't swap or if we swap, but it's basically, uh, I call it no swap because we jump to it if we, if we don't swap, basically. But yeah, what it does, uh, it increases, it should increase the ESI. Uh, why? Because uh, after every uh, comparison, we want to compare the next uh, pair, right? So we want to increase our ESI that it will point to this pair, then to this pair, then to this pair, and then to the last pair. We want to decrement EDX, and because we're gonna check uh, if EDX, we're gonna check, uh, we're gonna check uh, for EDX to be zero, basically. Uh, jump not zero inner loop. All right. So if EDX is not zero, we're gonna repeat this inner loop. And it will basically mean that we haven't uh, found the largest number yet. Because remember in this uh, animation I showed you, what we want, what inner loop does, it, uh, it moves the largest, uh, the current largest element of the unsorted partition to the, to the end, to this uh, sorted partition, right? It uh, bubbles, it sort of, it moves, the largest element moves like a bubble, hence the name. Uh, it goes, uh, it goes upwards. Like bubbles. Uh, sure. So once we have that, uh, we want to decrement ECX, and ECX is uh, our uh, is our uh, counter for the uh, for the outer loop. So that we end it, and again, jump not zero, uh, jump not zero outer loop. Okay. And uh, as the last thing, we want to finish our uh, we want to finish our program, so we will use a syscall for it. If you haven't used a syscall yet, don't worry. Uh, it's it basically looks like this, and we syscall. So this will basically uh, finish our uh, finish our program. Yeah. So this is the implementation of. Uh, let me minimize it. This is the implementation of bubble sort, a very simple one. I will make uh, more comments uh, of each line. So that uh, so that uh, I'm sure that you fully understood it, and the code will be on my GitHub link in the description as always. Let's compile it, uh, running VC vars first, so that it initializes our environment. You need Visual Studio uh, 2022 installed for this to work for you. Also, we need Nasm, of course. All the links in the description if you don't have any of the tools I'm using. All right. So as you can see, we have our bubble.object file ready, and what we need to do, int we 
is that, uh, let me actually copy the command so I don't make any spelling mistakes. I have it saved here. Just uh, let's go with bubble instead of main. Okay, and, uh, and that's it basically, because we are linking uh, only one object file. We don't have any external libraries, we are not using uh, any Windows API functions, so that's, that's it. And if you type ls, you can see that we have our bubble.exe. So, uh, if you run it, uh, nothing will, will be printed, because we are not printing anything, we are just sorting it in memory. Uh, hence, to see the, uh, the actual process, we need to run it in a debugger, so that's what I'm going to do now. As you can see, I'm using x32 debug, uh, you can download it from the link in the description if you want to follow along. Uh, you don't need to though. Uh, click this uh, arrow to go to the entry point. And let me uh, right click here, follow in dump constant so that we can see 5, 3, 4, 2, 5, 1. So our array. Let's step over. Uh, these two move instructions uh, should look familiar. These move values to uh, 5 to EAX and 3 to EBX. So now we are basically uh, looking at this pair, right? We compare them with this instruction. Five is obviously greater, so we want to swap and look at this. One, two. It is swapped. Three, five, as you can see. Uh, yeah, so then we increase ESI, we decrease EDX, and everything goes as planned. So let me make a breakpoint right here. This is the uh, closing line of our, uh, this is the closing uh, mechanisms of our uh, executable, if I can say so. Uh, this instruction jumps out of the outer loop, right? And here we just set up and call a syscall to finish the uh, our program. So uh, let's uh, click this so that we jump to the uh, next breakpoint. And as you can see right now, one, two, three, four, five, six. So at the end, uh, the algorithm worked and everything is uh, sorted in memory. And if you wonder how you can print these numbers to the screen, I have a video about it, so definitely go check it out. And as always, see you soon.